Yes, yes. We got something to eat now. I'm Zachary Fowler. And I'm Greg Ovens. And this is the 30 Day Survival Challenge, Canadian Rockies. There's only one rule. If you want to eat, you got to catch and cook it. The 30 Day Survival Challenge Season 2, Canadian Rockies, has been brought to you in part by Dr. Squatch Soap, Hidden Woodsman Gear, Go Prepared Survival, Outdoor Vitals, Wazoo Survival Gear, Simple Shot Shooting Sports, and Grim Workshop. Check out the link in the description below for the gear video of the 30 Day Survival Challenge. Good morning. It is day 23. And I've been awake for about an hour. And just trying not to yawn. <laughs> just daydreaming, staring at my tarp. I noticed there's a little sea creature in the pattern of my camouflage and my top cover here. We've got lots of adventure to get up to. And I'm not gonna have that by staying here in bed any longer. Here we go.
Lost one of the matches in my hat. That's a first. Um, Band-Aids. I used to think Band-Aids weren't manly. And it's pretty smoky right here. Miserable puke. I'm trying to talk to my camera here. Oi, babe. That's some early morning stuff. You done? Alright. Um, I used to think band-aids weren't manly. And uh, there's like, uh, I wouldn't put them on for almost anything. Unless it was like, just to keep the blood off of stuff while I'm working on something, you know? But uh, during my time alone in Patagonia, there was only one thing for me to read. And that was the medical guide. And so I read it cover to cover. And it said that, Band-Aids are an important part of helping a wound heal because it protects it, well, one from getting dirty, I knew that anyway, but uh, it protects it to keep it moist so it heals quicker, so you can be back in the action. So now I try to keep them on a little bit longer than I used to, but the darn things don't always stick and they're always coming undone. What are you supposed to do, just peel it off and always put a new one on? Um, this one's not even like 24 hours old because it, it everything just gets really dirty out here really quick. And I was like, gosh, I get into my thing, get a new Band-Aid out, but why waste it? I got a solution. Pitch. <laughs> Bushcraft Band-Aid stick em. I'm gonna take some pitch, and I got a chess piece that uh, the queen snapped when I was carving her, and so I'm gonna render down some pitch and fix my Band-Aid and my chess piece. Here's my little queen, and you can see right there in the top of her head, she got cracked. She had a check in her or something when I was whittling it. I'll put a little pitch in there and see if we can't glue her back together as well as fixing my band-aid so it stays on a little longer. Perfect. That is perfect. I warmed it up, gave it a squeeze, squeezed out all the nice and tight, like she was never cracked in the first place. And these will actually work. You can take and um, take a bunch of pitch and kind of do the same thing with another rock. Maybe dish it out and then take and dip your stick into it and have these in your like fire starter kit as a great little fire starter. Watch this thing go up. Well, okay, that was uneventful. There wasn't a lot of pitch on the end of it. Traditionally, if you're making like a little um, fire starter t stick to get your fire going in the rain, you're gonna like have a wad of uh, pitch on the end of a stick about that size that's like, you know, quarter inch thick all the way around and an inch long, and you get your fire in with that, and you're like, and it gets in there and it burns, and, and you can see that it flamed up the fire a little bit. Just that little bit of stick with some pitch on it, but yeehaw, I am hungry. I'm gonna check on that um, anti-brine fish, see if those fillets have reduced their amount of saltiness and are eatable. Well, yesterday we, we tried these out. These are the ones we were smoking. And they've been smoked, cured, but they were too salty. And that actually tastes good. I think our anti-brine water, keeping them for a bit, <laughs> might have fixed it. Oh, that fixed it. It's lost all of its saltiness, or the majority of it. Now it just tastes like soft fish that's been in, um, like, clam chowder, you know, or, or like fish chowder, but without the delicious butter. So much more eatable than yesterday. Holy cow. And it's getting better as it goes. Oh, there we go. 
that's the ticket. Awesome. I completely redeemed this overly salty trout. Good morning. Good morning. Trout's good. Huh? Trout's good. Oh, good. Well, I'm glad that we could salvage it because we're out of food, man. So, you've been checking the slide for her buddy? and Yeah. I keep looking over there, but no bear. Greg's over on the other side. We split up. He's at his secret spot. And I'm at the spot we've been at since the beginning, which has proved to be very successful. Gonna have to find me some worms, though, because worms catch fish. Before I find some worms, I have some other things to attend to. Oh, this moss is kind of thin. There we go. That's the kind you want. Right there, that's the Charmin of the woods. Ah. Here's a nice patch of it. That's what you want right there. There's the, a lot of stuff in it. That's the Charmin of the woods. Right there. Remove some of those sticks. That's, uh, that can be uncomfortable. Oh, and that pine cone definitely would be uncomfortable. All right, let's find some worms. Well, this is pretty. I hadn't come over to this side yet. What a beautiful place. So gorgeous. I'll have Greg, my worm bloodhound with me, so I gotta try and do what he would do. What would Greg do? WWGD. Come on, there we go. Oh, look at them all. Look at them all. Fat little ones too. I'll flip the log back so they can do their thing, and I can do my thing and turn these worms into fishes. It's not like a miracle from the Bible. It's just trading up. Or at least that's the plan. Most of the time we've been successful. And man, are they big in here. I can't wait. Oh, that little filet was great this morning, but I would love to catch three fish so we could stay around the camp for the next couple days. The smell of the cow parsnip is so strong. They're just half ripe here. So I wouldn't be surprised to see a bear in here at some point. One of these days when we come down just munching on these things. I don't see any of the heads bit off here like that. Uh, I don't know, some time around day 12 or something like that, we saw a bunch of the uh, cow parsnip all chewed up and stuff. Like a bear had been through the area and we saw some grizzly poop, but that was uh, when we were foraging for wild onions. It smells so good though. Man, the smell, oh, the fragrance of it. But that's also the fragrance of when you're eating it that ends up overpowering your tongue and you're like, ah, you can only eat just so much. Unless it's, uh, as Greg says, doused in a cheese sauce. Lucky lure's getting kind of ragged. Let's see if she's got a couple more left in her. Won't you give me a fish for dinner? My friends all have pizza. And that's my favorite. Oh, I got one. We still got him? Oh yeah. Do I got him? If I do, he's a little one or he's coming. Oh, there he is. Woo! Take my time. Not fighting as hard as others. I like that. 
Not a big one. No! No! Ah, oh, the net's stuck on the sticks! There we go. Got him! Woo! All right. That's one. Yes! 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 We got something to eat now. It's not a bad. It's a good, uh, it's a, it's a good meal. Not exactly a a great splitting fish, so hopefully Greg's got one too. See what's in his mouth right there? Shrimps. He's got a couple of them. And I, when I cut up their bellies, or that's all I saw in their bellies, just full of shrimp. These uh, freshwater shrimp. I've tried a couple times with the fly rod, and it's so windy I keep snagging on things. I'm not very good with it. I almost need a taller rod or something. Uh, it worked great for the streams and just flicking out my little flies. But I'd like to get down here on one day that's not windy and I could just do some nice fly fishing and see if I can't catch one of these guys on one of those shrimp tie flies that I tied over 20 years ago now. Back to my lucky lure. My lucky, lucky lure, not my lucky lure. Oh, I am just all sorts of wiped. I can't wait to eat this fish. The fish this morning, I think, uh, get behind on our calories. Yesterday, we only had the gopher and gopher stew and that really salty filet. It's just, I think we're probably operating on a quarter of the amount of calories needed. And this fish is smaller. And I have to share it. I'm not complaining. I'm just explaining. Because we don't do complaining on 30 Day Survival Challenge. Greg's caught more than me and always shared. We're doing good together as a team. We're actually... This is... Um, I can't say it, but like the best teammate I've ever had. Because uh, me and the Widow Beardsman make a pretty good team, too. But... Uh, you're doing pretty good. You've seen me eat a trout a whole bunch of times already. I want to say thank you, Lord, for this trout. Again, thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Whew. Finished that just in time. I was just about to be out of cord on my spool. Now I got my nice, new, hopefully it works, uh, another cargo net. 
this one is going to go on the pole right above my hammock so I can put my stuff in there at night. I can't remember how to diminish properly with a net and add stuff, so I kind of made it up as I went along. So hopefully that means the stuff stays in it. If not, I can always put a couple sticks that hold it open and make that a pocket, I think. It'll work. It'll work. It'll work. It'll be nice to be able to put my rain gear somewhere so it's not in my pack basket and I have to like pull it out of my pack basket and go in there and find my other camera lens or my batteries or the chess set, something. <laughs> Man, would this make a good gill net too. It would imagine, make an just, gill net. just imagine. There's fish are down there and they're going back and forth and just stuffing themselves it's with those. It's very tempting, isn't it? I know, I know. Now I got two of them, you know. But you'll see them installed in my, and we're not gonna have any magical fish that were just like, oh, I caught this dead limp fish on my, <laughs> and it just happens to be tied through the gills and not just a hook. And yeah. <laughs> we will catch them legitimately. Well, and, I guess we have and, to. And fairly. Well, yeah. It'd just be fun to try it. Cause I've It'd never, be fun to I've try never it. caught a fish with a gill net cause they're legal everywhere. Well, they are here too. Yeah, so. Well, unless you're a commercial fisherman on the ocean and, and yeah. the Fraser River yeah. and stuff, but... Hey, little guy. Where's your mommy? What you doing, little gopher? What's up, mom? She just ran off and left you. It's a baby one. See how these little catch, little, uh, I don't know what to call them. Junk hammocks? Junk hammocks work. I'm gonna go home and cover my house instead of with shelves, junk hammocks. They're like, yeah. But like, why is you have a like net on your wall? It's my junk hammock. There we go. I'll finish lashing those tomorrow. I want to build a table down below. Surprise Greg while he's gone. But uh, that worked out pretty good. A couple extra pieces. I'll use those for the table right now. And I'll lash these tomorrow. They're pretty solid. Everything's pretty tucked in there pretty tight. Not like I'm going to have a contra dance up here. Anyway, so table legs. 
table upright, table lumbar support, extra table leg, want to trim one too short. Now what's going on? Sounded kind of windy again. I don't see any rain clouds though. Nice. All right. As far as rustic goes, that's pretty much all you need. Well, that's as rustic as it gets, isn't it? Yeah. That's like, I mean, like I was thinking I'd do more to it, but. Well, what I, I more might do you have to do? Well, I might tune them up. Like, see that edge up is up a little bit. Uh -huh. And then like. What if, if you it, turn it the other way? It needs, still need, there's not sticking out. Oh, mm -hmm. smoke. But it sits better. Then Does it? Gotta, then you, yeah, then you just gotta clean no, it. No, it still huh? rocks, doesn't it? A little bit. It needs to be. So you're just gonna fine tune it? Yeah, a little fine tuning. Ah, oh, man. The smoke's getting you. Yeah. My spot turned into the smoky spot all day. <laughs> it looks good. Oh, well, perfect. Look at that. I made perfect. sure, no, I made sure your knee wasn't gonna hit it. Yeah. I checked by sitting there. Perfect. Our knees are the same length. We're knee buddies. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. That'll be great. I'm so psyched not to have to uh, have my food like in my lap all the time. I could put it on there after I pull it out of the fire. Excellent. Yeah, and to be able to play a game of chess, just sit it's, there together uh, and time well spent. Yeah, that only took me. I I was still working up here yeah. on my shelter when you left, and I worked on that for like almost half the time you're gone, and then I busted this out. So yeah. that went well, pretty quick. Good. 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 I'm yeah. happy about it. Now I can build you a Windsor chair after, so you have oh, something for your perfect. back. <laughs> perfect. Okay, <laughs> so... Uh, it's just a moose. It's like 40 feet away. 
Oh, wildlife. Check. Mate. Mate. That's meat because That's mate. I can't go anywhere. Yeah. Okay, well, he got his checkmate. Yeah, that means it's, you know, it's two to two. That's two to two. That's two to two. This is so great. So we're pretty closely matched, at least. Yeah, that's awesome. You know. There we go. In for the night. We're, we're doing pretty good. We're almost, almost living it up. I mean, if it wasn't for just, I don't know, we could really use, like, a, two fish each a day at this point. We're kind of diminished in calorie wise but if it wasn't for you know that <laughs> you can see we're, we're having a lot of fun and it's looking pretty good we got all kinds of new plans we were working on just before we went to bed here blueberries should be ripe we might go on a hike and see if we can't just score like tons and tons of blueberries they're high bush blueberries here which are my favorite um i hate to be a trader but main blueberries are they're they're good but they're tiny little things and, and they got lots of little seedy bit but like the another mosquito the high bush blueberries are so big they're like little plums i love them but uh yeah i want to build my drawbridge and uh see the grizzly and catch more fish and uh we got some other interesting things in mind to bring this adventure around to the end. So I'm going to go to bed and dream about more ideas like that. And I will see you guys in the next one. Fowler out.